بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومنادنا وقوة عبدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه في الأولين وصل وسلم وبارك عليه في الأخرين وصل وسلم وبارك عليه في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين In the name of Allah, the gracious, the merciful, to him we belong and to him we shall return. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom and in his infinite mercy to send peace and blessings upon our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon our parents. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon our brothers and sisters across the world, whether they may be in Bangladesh, China, in Central Africa right now, Muslims are being slaughtered left, right. In Egypt, Syria, Palestine. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon them all. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove the hardship upon them. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who will always remember their brothers and sisters in Islam, wherever they may be. We always have them in our hearts and our minds. And the least that we can do is remember them with our hearts, as the Prophet has taught us. So we remember them with our hearts and we make dua for them and we remember them as much as we can. The unique relationship that exists between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and us as His creation lies in how we were created. We, as creation of Allah, are made up of two primary components. We are made up of a material substance, clay, and we are made up of something else. What is that? So the, the soul, the divine breath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فِيهِ مِنْ رُوحِهِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blew into us a divine breath. Now when Allah places us on this earth, which part of our being is attracted to the earth, the dunya? Clearly the material side, the clay side. And so the dunya consumes us day in and day out. Everything about this world is consuming. And your material side is constantly attracted to the dunya. And the divine breath becomes hidden and covered. And so what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is He sends us prophets and messengers. And these prophets and messengers are to do what? To reconnect us to the divine breath, which ultimately is a secret between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what connects us to Allah. And the Rusul and the Anbiya, they reconnect us to that. Each of the messengers and the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had unique traits, unique titles that really signified who they were. Ibrahim alayhi salam, what was he known as? Ibrahim, what was he known as? Khalilullah. Khalilullah means the close friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ulama say, why do you think he was named Khalilullah? Because the duty of Ibrahim alayhi salam was Abu al-Anbiya, the father of prophets. And to be that source of prophetic, divine faith, then what was required was a close friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, hence, Ibrahim is Khalilullah. Musa alayhi salam, what was his name? What was his title? Kalimullah. Kalimullah is the one who spoke directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the ulama say the reason why Musa was Kalimullah was because Banu Israel had become so hardened in their submission to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they had become, to them, Fir'aun was almost like an ilah. He, he claimed, and they were downtrodden. They were downtrodden people. They became hardened in the state. So it's as if they needed a direct word from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shape them. And that's why the metaphor for that exists in the story of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Musa. When, when Allah called Musa to the mountain, He said what? Alqiha ya Musa, fa'alqaha fa'idha hiya hayyatun tasa. Musa was holding a stick. And He said, Alqiha ya Musa, throw it ya Musa. That stick turned into a snake. So that is a metaphor for the direct words of Allah, changing that which is hard, stiff, into that which is soft. Isa alayhi salam, what was he known as? Ruhullah, the spirit of Allah. The reason why Isa alayhi salam was Ruhullah, the spirit of Allah, 
Because the people that Isa was sent to were people who were spiritually bankrupt. They lost their souls. They had become so enamored by the dunya. All they wanted was recognition in this dunya. They wanted money, they wanted wealth. And so Allah spent, sent to them a purely spiritual message in the form of Ruhullah, Isa alayhi salam. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends to this world, this creation, the last and final messenger. Khatimul Anbiya wa Khatimul Anbiya. The seal of prophethood and the last and final messenger. The one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Allah, Allah and His angels send peace and blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine, Allah jalla wa ala, He is the one who in the Quran proclaims that He sends peace and blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the law, wa malaikatan yu salluna, sallu alayhi wa sallu sallimu taslima. He commands us, send peace and blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the one who on the day of judgment, he will be our shafiyah. He will be the one who intercedes for us. Because on the day of judgment, we will run from prophet to prophet. We will run to Sayyidina Adam, and he will say, Ilayhi Mu'anni, go, go to someone else. Go to Ibrahim, we'll go to Ibrahim, Ibrahim will say, Nafsi, Nafsi. Go to Musa, we'll run to Musa, we'll run to Musa, Musa will say the same thing. Go to Isa, we'll run to Isa. Ishfa'adana, please. Seek for us, ask for us, intercede for us. All of them will, will say we cannot. Nafsi, Nafsi, I am too busy with my own self. Until Isa salam, sends us to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we will run to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we will beg Sayyidina Muhammad to intercede for us. And he says, Ana laha, ana laha. I am for it, I will do it. And he goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he prostrates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says? Allah says, Irfa it, raise your head, ask and you will be given. Intercede and I will intercede for you. And the Prophet will say, Ummati, Ummati. Ummati, Ummati. My Ummah, my Ummah. That, SubhanAllah, that question, that intercession, that dua is called al shafaatul Uzma, the grand intercession of the Prophet. And every Prophet of Allah was given a dua in this world that was absolutely accepted. And the Prophet kept his dua until the afternoon. And who did he keep it for? For us, his ummah. And he will intercede for us on the day of judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him on the miraculous night journey from Mecca to Baytul Maqdis. And in Al-Aqsa there, he prayed, led 124,000 prophets in, in, in congregation in Salah. And then Allah Jalla wa Ala raised him to Sidratul Muntaha, the highest point where, where Jibreel himself could not pass. And he was allowed to pass and meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَاهِذُوا وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا What the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has brought you, take it. And what he has prohibited you from, stay away. So much so, the Prophet is so integral to our existence. Allah says, قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهُ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولُ Obey Allah and obey His Messenger. More than that, there is no such thing as Iman without Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa What is the proclamation of faith? What is the proclamation of faith? Say it. أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَأَنَّ there is no Iman. If you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, you're not a mu'min. You're not complete. You're not a Muslim. What do you have to proclaim? Wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the one that Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا that verily in the Prophet ﷺ, and the word the fi when it is used, the article fi when it is used, it is used to infer a meaning of absolute inness. Everything about the Prophet ﷺ is the best of guidance for us. 
So clearly, clearly, there is a secret, unique, profound relationship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen this Prophet Muhammad to be our messenger. And we are clearly commanded to submit and follow the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah Himself praises the Prophet by saying, Allah sends peace and blessing. In Allah, wa malaikusalluna ala al So what then is the unique title that is given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Habibullah. <laughs> I think you heard one of my talks. <laughs> um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Habib. Now, what's the difference between Habib and Khalib? Some may ask, what is the difference between Habib and Khalib? Khalib means what? Close friend, correct? Now, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also Khalib. And he's also Khalib. Is the only one who is Habibullah. And Habibullah, the uniqueness of Habibullah lies in that a relationship of hope not only encompasses the two parties involved, but it encompasses everyone involved in the process. So for the Prophet to be the last and final messenger, the seal of prophets, the one who is sent. The one who is sent to all of humanity. That I have sent you, Ya Nabi, as a shahid, as a witness, and as a mubashir, someone who is bringing that tidings. Wa nadir, a warner. Wa da'iyan in Allah, in a call to Allah, bi'idnihi, by his permission. Wa sirajan munira, and a bright source of light. This is who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is. For not only his people that he was sent to, but for all of mankind until the Day of Judgment. You know the Prophet ﷺ, he will be the first person to knock on the door of Jannah. And that they will knock, he will knock on the door of Jannah and the angels will ask, who is it? And he will say, Muhammad ﷺ. And they'll say, we have not been commanded to open the door except to you, Ya Muhammad ﷺ. And he will be the first to enter into Jannah with his ummah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Habibullah. Now there are so there's such unique traits that we see in the Quran and Sunnah that really infer this profound meaning of love. The love, the Habib of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa teaches us. Wallahi. None of you will truly ever believe, Allah swears, that none of you will believe until That Wallahi, none of you will be believers until the Prophet, me, he says, the Prophet is more beloved to you than yourself, your wealth, your family, your, your children, and all of humanity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, عَلَى لِسَانِ مُحَمَّدُ قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ If you truly love Allah. See, there's a, the relationship of love is very profound. First, there is no belief unless Muhammad is more beloved. In the Quran, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ If you claim to love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Obey and follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that Allah can love you. Subhanallah, the profound relationship between the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the following of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which is ultimately begets the love of Allah for us. And there's a hadith that encompasses this relationship of love between us and our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where Sayyidina, Abu, Sayyidina Muhammad is sitting in the house of Aisha. Our mother, Aisha, the beloved wife of the Prophet. And Anas, Anas ibn Malik, who is the servant of the Prophet, is the one who is narrating this hadith. He says, I was in the house of Aisha, and it was me, the Prophet, Abu Bakr, and Aisha. We were sitting in the house of the Prophet, and the Prophet turns to Abu Bakr and says, I wish 
that I would have met my brothers. Later on, he repeats it again, I wish that I would have met my brothers. So Sayyidina Abu Bakr is confused. He says, Ya Rasulullah, we are your brothers. He said, no, 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 antum ashabi. You are my companions, you are my friends, you are my companions. He says, Ikhwani, my brothers, are a people, those, lam yarawni, they never saw me. Saddaquni, they believed in me. Wa ahabuni, they believed in me and they loved me. Fa inni uhibbuni, verily I love them. And so Sayyidina Muhammad turns to Abu Bakr and he says, do you not love a people that love you because I love you? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He tells Abu Bakr, Ya Abu Bakr, I love you. And these people, they love you because I love you. So love them. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is a profound relationship that exists between us, Allah, and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the question is, what kind of love are we talking about? Because I don't want you to think that we're talking about Hollywood love, romantic love. That's not the kind of love that we're talking about. The love that we're talking about is love of sacrifice. Love that is based upon a desire to sacrifice and submit and follow and do whatever it takes to have the pleasure of Allah and His Messenger. The love that we're talking about is difficult. It's not easy love. Early on in the Meccan time period, when the Risala first came and the Muslims were ext under extreme hardship, Abu Sufyan was torturing the believers and he took one of the believers, Zayd ibn Dukunna, to the outskirts of Mecca. He took him to the outskirts of Mecca and he hugged him, he crucified him, and he would torture him. And he came and he would whisper in Zayd's ear and he would say, would you prefer that the Prophet was here instead of you? And Zayd, after being dazed and confused and tired, awakens. And he says, absolutely not. I would not prefer it that myself and my family are safe for even the, for the Prophet to even be pricked by a thorn. I would rather die myself and my children die, my family die, than for the Prophet to be pricked by a thorn in his foot. And so Abu Sufyan, although he was in the, the heart of shirk, he said, Wallahi ma ra'aytu ahadan. I have not seen people who loved somebody kahubbi ashabi Muhammadin Muhammadan. I have never seen a people who loved a people, someone, like the love of the companions of the Prophet, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because it was a love that was based on absolute sacrifice. Everything was going to be given in the way of Allah and His Messenger. They did not keep anything for themselves. Sayyidina Abu Bakr was someone who gave everything in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything he had for his Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now I want you to understand, Abu Bakr was a very wealthy man. And the ulama say he had meaning that he had something like nine businesses. And businesses at that time, Allahu alam what they meant, but he was a very wealthy man. One day Abu Bakr leaves his house. He opens his front door and he walks out. Sayyidina Umar sees him. And he says, What brought you out of your home? Abu Bakr says, What brought me out of my home is that I'm starving. I'm hungry. I haven't eaten in days. Sayyidina Umar says, what brought you out of your home is exactly what brought me out of my home. I myself have not eaten in days. And they continue to walk. Who do they bump into? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They bump into the beloved messenger Muhammad. And the Prophet says to them, Ma What brought you out of your homes? They said, Ya Rasulullah, we're hungry, we haven't eaten in days, we're starving. Says, what brought you out of your homes is exactly what brought me out of my home. And so he says, let's go. And the story is beautiful and long, but he, they ultimately go to an Ansari, one of the Ansar of Medina. And he himself shows the beauty of himself. He had one sheep and he told his wife, the Prophet has come, we have to slaughter him. And he slaughtered it, and the Prophet and Sayyidina Umar and Sayyidina Abu Bakr begin to eat. And as they're eating, the Prophet turns to them 
as they're eating, he says, see this na'im that you have? You see this blessing that you have? This, this is the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you about. They haven't eaten in days, they're starving. Abu Bakr was an extremely wealthy man, but he cannot find something to eat. And now that he finally has eaten something, the Prophet says, You will be asked about this Naheem one day. Now, I want you to really try to live with Abu Bakr for a moment. This is a man who had a He was from Ashraf Mecca. He was from the, the most dignified people of Mecca. He gave everything to Allah and His Messenger. And on top of that, Allah, the Prophet, is reminding him, no matter what you've given, everything that you've given, no matter what blessing you have, automatically remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was the kind of love they had for the Prophet That was the kind of love they had for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were ready and willing to give everything in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, the Prophet told the Sahaba one day, because they were surprised he was asking these questions who visited someone who is sick Abu Bakr raises his hand who went to help someone who is in need Abu Bakr raises his hand it's Fajr time it's still early in the morning and then the Prophet says to Sahaba don't be surprised he did not beat you out with doing a lot of prayer and a lot of fasting he, he outdid you guys in something that settled in his heart. That was Iman. The belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, what are, what are we trying to get at here? I want us that when we say we love the Prophet I want that to actually mean something. Because I'll tell you what my fear is. A lot of us claim to love the Prophet, correct? Anyone here not love the Prophet? Who loves the Prophet? Oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm not, oh, absolutely, I love the Prophet. Ya Allah, inshallah, may Allah place us all with the Prophet. But I'll tell you what my fear is. On the Day of Judgment, there are people who will run to the Prophet. They will see the Prophet next to his house, next to his basin, and they will run to the Prophet. And the Prophet will be excited, and we will be excited. Or those people, we don't want to be them. Those people will be excited. But what happens? The angels come, and they deflect these people. They say, you are not allowed to go to the Prophet And they will be surprised, why? And the Prophet will ask, why are you deflecting? These are people from my own. He says, they are not from your own. They claimed to be from your own. They claimed to love you. But they did not truly love you as well. And so they are not from your own land, they will be deflected away from you. That's what scares me, personally. That I will come and I will live this life claiming to be a follower of Allah and His Messenger, and on the Day of Judgment I will be deflected from the prophecy of Allah. But I won't have the chance to drink from His basin on the Day of Judgment. That I will not be with the people who enter into Jannah with the Prophet when He knocks on the door of Jannah. And so brothers and sisters, the kind of love that we have to have for the Prophet is one of sacrifice. One of absolute willingness to do everything that the Prophet has come to me with. Whatever he has asked me to do, I do it. Because the nature of this dunya is that it is absolutely deceptive. And it tricks you into thinking that things are okay, things are fine. But look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran says. فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ When they forgot what they were reminded of. فَلَمَّا نَسُوا مَا ذُكِّرُوا بِهِ فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ We open up the doors of all things to them. Basically the world is open to, to you. All things of this world are given to you. Cars, comfort, homes, food, everything that you want from this dunya is at your feet, at your fingertips. فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَابَ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ they become so happy with this dunya that has opened up to them. We take them at a moment's notice. 
At that moment, they are in wretched despair. And they will come on the day of judgment, they will come in the afterlife, and they will say, Rabbil Jihoon, Rabbil Jihoon, oh Allah, allow me to return to the dunya. Rabbil Jihoon, la'alli a'amalu salihan fi ma tarak, oh Allah, let me return to the dunya, and maybe I will do good with what I have left behind. And Allah will say what? Kalla. No. Kalla innaha kalimatun wa qa'ilah. No. It is one word that has been said. It is one word that has been said. Allah says, it is one word that has been said. That's it. No more return. So brothers and sisters, what we hope, inshallah, and we pray and we plead with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that He makes us of those who are truly followers of the Prophet. And we don't want to be amongst those who think that they are doing okay in this dunya. And I am just floating the wrong, wrong. And that we are amongst these people who are engrossed in the dunya, who have been consumed by the dunya. Because Allah Azza wa Jalla warns us of a people that لهم قلوب they have hearts لا يفقهون ولقد ذرأنا لجهنم كثيرا من الجن والإنس we have made it for Jahannam that there are many humans in jinn لهم قلوب they have hearts لا يفقهون بها they don't understand anything لهم أعين لا يبصرون بها they have eyes but they don't see anything لهم آذان لا يسمعون بها they have ears, but they hear nothing. They are like animals. In reality, they're worse than animals. Who are these people? Those who are mindless and heedless of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers, the fear is, the fear is that we are mindless of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we see that Allah is commanding us. We see and we hear and we know that Allah has sent us the Messenger of Allah. He has sent us the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we don't see it. And we don't hear it. And we don't feel it. And we don't follow it. And we claim to be Muslims. And we claim to be followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But that's not actually the case. And so brothers and sisters, we seek refuge in Allah from being those people who have claimed to be lovers of the Prophet وسلم, but are not that. And we beg Allah to make us true lovers of the Prophet And we ask and we seek refuge that Allah does not make us amongst those who are lawfulim, mindless and heedless. Because we don't, those people on the Day of Judgment, then when they're shocked that they've been taken and there's no opportunity to return, that's it, One word Allah says to them, that's all. So brothers and sisters, this dunya, its nature is deceptive. And its nature is to attract our bodies to it. And we become attached to it. And all we want is this dunya. And this is the destructive quality of the dunya. So we seek to attach our hearts and our minds to the divine breath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is within us. Alhamdulillah, the door to return to Allah is present. Always open. Allah says in a hadith Qudsi, Beautiful long hadith that the abd will come to me closer and closer with nawafil by extra prayers until I love them and I will become their eyes and their ears and their hands and if they come to me walking I'll come to them running. Allah comes down every night saying Hal min ta'ibin fa'atuwa Hal min mustaghfirin fa'atuwa Is there someone who has who needs to repent so I can repent upon them? Someone who has a need so that I can give it to them? Someone who has a question so that I'll fulfill it for them. All of this, brothers and sisters, is at our fingertips right now. At our fingertips right now to run and take what Allah has given to us. So brothers and sisters, this is a humble advice from your brother to return to Allah and His Messenger. And do not allow yourself for a moment to be deceived by this dunya. This dunya is absolutely gone. This dunya is inaka mayyit. But Allah tells him, Nika mayyid, I'm the mayyid too, you are dead, that's it. Act as if you are dead, because that is your reality. That is your reality. And that should become our reality. And the only way we can see this reality is by following Allah and His Messenger. If we don't, we will be blind. If we don't, we will be an an'am bal We will be like the animals, actually worse than the animals. 
So we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are true followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who truly love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who love the book of Allah jalla wa ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the afterlife, who are granted a drink from the basin of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask that Allah Azza wa Jal places us in the shade of Allah the day when there is no shade. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us the highest levels of Jannah, to forgive our parents' sins, to have mercy upon them as they had mercy upon us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make beloved to our hearts Iman and Islam, and to make hated to our hearts Kuf and Fusuq and Isyan. And Allah makes us of those who hate Kuf, disbelief, and hate evil, and hate any form of disobedience. May Allah make us of those who are righteous servants. When Sayyidina Yusuf was dying, what was his, after all of the hardship that he went through in his life, all of the ups and downs, what was his final request from Allah? What was his final dua? Tawafani Musliman wa alhaqni bisan. Let me die a Muslim. Let me die a Muslim, ya Allah. And let me be with the righteous. Brothers and sisters, your Islam is not something that is absolutely guaranteed. Because one of the signs of the times is you'll see that the person will wake up a Muslim and can go to bed together. I always did not understand really why one of the most common adayah of the Prophet was Why would the Prophet of Allah make this dua commonly, constantly. Ya muqallib al-qulub, thabbit qalbi ala deen. O Allah, the one who transforms the heart, make steadfast my heart on your deen. He is the Prophet of Allah, the Messenger of Allah. But one of the most common adhiyah, keep my heart steadfast on your deen, ya Allah. Because he knew that the deen is not something that is absolutely given. Just as Allah gave it to you, whether through birth or through conversion, Allah can take it from you. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr would say, Wallahi, even if my right leg was in Jannah, I would not be confident that my left leg would follow. I would not be confident that my left leg would follow. And vice versa, he had the hope in Allah. That even if his left leg was in Jahannam, he still had hope that his right leg would not follow. So brothers and sisters, let us make dua that Allah makes us steadfast on our deen. And may He allow us to die Muslim. Allahumma rzukna qabla al-mawti tawba, wa inda al-mawti shahada, wa ba'da al-mawti jannata wa na'ima. Tawaffana ya Allah, muslimin, wa alhiqna bis salihin. O Allah, allow us to die as Muslims, and allow us to be in the afterlife with the righteous. O oh Allah, never take away from us our Islam. This is the greatest blessing that we have been given to, from you to us, Ya Allah. Never take it away from us, Ya Allah. We beg and we plead that you never take away from us our Islam. And you make it more beloved to us than anything on this earth. Jazakumullah khair. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our giving. And I thank our dear brother Shaykh for this invitation. Barakallahu alaykum. خلالك كم تحن له القلوب وذكرك كم يرد دنيا
أن ذلاتي كبار وأن الجذع ليس له ذنوب القلب ناجاك والدمع ناداك ما لي أنا العاصي مولاي إلا كا القلب ناجاك والدمع ناداك ما لي أنا العاصي مولاي إلا كا إني على خجلي يا غاية الأمل إني على خجلي يا غاية الأمل أبعدت في غيري عن نورك الأزل عن نورك الأزل عيناي قد ذرفا مما مضى أسفا عيناي قد ذرفا ذرفا مما مضى أسفا وأنا هنا عبد عبد بذنبه اعترفا بذنبه اعترفا السيف أعمالي وشبابي الفاني في بهرج الدنيا ضيعة إيماني آه السيف أعماني وشبابي الفاني في بهرج الدنيا ضيعة إيماني إني على خجلي يا غاية الأمل I'm